Hi, Dalton. How are you? Good, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve, man. What's up in your world? Well, I was just calling. I have a couple questions. I've been listening to a few of your podcasts, and I just figured, why not call in? So, cool. I am 22 years old, and I've been working for the, well, since I was 19. I went to school for welding, and uh, I've been traveling the tri-state area where I live for the past almost three years. Well, since I was 19, so two or three years. And uh, I've uh, saved up almost $90,000. Wow, wow. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of money are you making a year as a welder? Um, close to, if I work, I work outages and sometimes it's, uh, iffy, like you work a few months here, a few months there, but on, on average, I've averaged from 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Good for you. Well done. The trades pay well. You're working a lot of hours and it's hard work, but you're making good money, yeah. right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're, when you're on, you're working, that's, that's tough work, but, uh, and so you're working power stuff, huh? Yeah, nuclear mostly. I've worked in a uh, lot of nuclear plants and building nuclear plants. Okay. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, you're 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 really building a resume there. That's pretty impressive. Good. And you got eighty five thousand dollars. And are you living at home or are you are you living in a camper? I mean, what are you doing? I recently just bought a camper about a month ago, and before that, I was living with a high school friend that I went to welding school with in his camper. And then before that, I had rented an apartment, which was one of my worst mistakes. But you live and you learn. Yeah, because you're never there. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And pay a lot more. I could have paid for a camper for what I paid in rent in that apartment. Yeah. So, so you so you're going to SUV. I mean, as you're going to win a bago it around or whatever while you uh, whatever the brand is while you uh, run this circuit for a while at this stage of your life. How long do you think you're going to live that life? Well, that's what I was asking. I was recently um, gave some advice because I was talking to um, a person I knew that has owned, owned a business, and they told me, well, if you don't want to travel all the time, why don't you buy, like, a service truck and open your own welding business? And so I was just going to ask you, uh, if you what you thought about that idea or how much money you think you would have to have saved up to start your own business as a welding business. Enough to buy the supplies Min- and, okay. and the truck? Okay. You can outfit this truck for fifty grand, right? Yes, or less. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want a fancy truck. It's going to be hauling a bunch of junk around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it is. It's welding equipment. It's your. It's your trade. Yeah, but it's not. Right. This is yeah. not a. You don't need an. You don't need a uh, something from a Chevy commercial. I mean, this is this is a work truck, right? Exactly. And so uh, I love that idea. So what I would tell you if you're my twenty two year old son is that. Running a business is different than running an arc welder. Okay. So you have the skills to be a welder. You do not have the skills yet to run a business. Okay. And much like you had to learn how to weld, you're going to learn how to run a business. And Correct. so you've got to start thinking about what it takes to operate a business, not just perform the task. Okay. So, I mean, buying a truck and getting the welding gear, yeah. And can you do the job once you've got the job? Yeah. But you have to price it. You have to collect it. You have to pay your taxes. You have to get new customers. You have to take care of the existing customers. And now you're running a business. <laughs> yes. And so, okay. I, you know, and it, it is at least as difficult to run a, a business with a service truck like that as it is to weld. The other thing, Dalton, is, and don't let that discourage you because the day-to-day will still be the welding work. Your day-to-day yeah. will still be doing the work you know how to do and you love how to do, but there will be a learning curve where you figure out how are you going to price this? How are you going to manage the money? How are you going to interact with customers, with clients, and and, and, and even points of contact? Like the really tactical stuff that you probably don't deal with day-to-day and you haven't even thought about in terms of your business. Some of this is as simple as talking to someone who's running a business, as, as doing a Google search, as just putting some of your notes and ideas on paper. Start to just let this idea simmer in your mind and capture your thoughts in a, in a notebook or something really basic. This does not have to be sophisticated and it doesn't have to overwhelm you. Once you get through this learning curve of learning some of the basic business setup and the basic business operations, you will spend the vast majority of your time, 80 to 90% of your time doing the welding work, especially out of the gate, because that's, that's, 
you know, in the initial stages that you just own your job. That's what you're doing. But you do need to just think about some of these things and, and learn some of these things. And, uh, and if you start doing that, you could make even more money doing this. I want you to find a 35-year-old guy that's running a truck and doing welding and making a good living. And I want you to go take a day or two, or next time you've got some downtime, I want you to go spend three days with him. Take your camper. Okay. Take your camper. Go hang out in that city where he could be two cities over, five cities over. I don't care. Maybe he's over at Dallas. You're you, mobile. You run over there okay. from you run over there from Atlanta. Spend two or three days with him, and I want you to go to school, not on welding, on running a business. Okay. On business. How do, how do you run a business? What did you not know? What do I need to know? How do you do your pricing? Where do your customers come from? And I want you to take like some yellow pads or a, an iPad or something. I want you to fill up files and files and files and files of the answers of an actual practitioner in that world. And so, okay. you know, when you first learned to weld, they showed you that someone showed you by welding. You watched them weld, right? Yes, you're exactly Your right. very first class. And then you tried it. And then they helped you by letting you watch the, then you watched it again. And then you tried it again until finally that thing would quit sticking and it would actually create an arc, right? Exactly. And, um, so, well, maybe you're doing a settling, I don't know, but, um, but anyway, yeah, point the meta the metaphor still stands. So uh, yeah, no, exactly yeah, you go study you go study someone else, and then you do it, and then you study someone else, and then you do it, and then you study someone else, and and your first step is to get the business up and running, and then your next step is to grow the business to where it's not to where you own more than just your job. Your first goal in business is at least own your own job, and when you, if you yeah. don't work if you don't go to work you don't get paid. That's owning your own job, right? But if you got five people working for you welding and six trucks out there, uh, now you own a business that if you don't work one day, they all still work. And that's that's growing it to the next level. But I don't want to go too fast here. You're 22. you got plenty of time. Yes, I would buy a service truck. And, yes, I would go into business if you have that desire. But go study business from a couple people. I'm going give, to give you a copy of our number one best-selling book, uh, Entree Leadership, which is how we, it's our playbook on how we started this business and how we ran it and run it. And it'll give you some good guidelines on how to get there. Dalton, I want to give you a couple questions too, to ask these people that you're going to study and shadow and learn from one, ask them, what did you learn the hard way? Mm -hmm. Another, uh, another way to ask it is, um, what did you wish you knew when you got started? And another thing to ask them are, what are the biggest trip ups I should look out for? Like customers or problems or things that, man, that, that just, you know, might, might be a potential landmine that you don't even know. How can you learn about that before you get into it? Ask some of those questions to get some of those learnings without you having to learn the hard way yourself. And, and they'll tell you, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll show you and you can, you can avoid that going out, you know, out of the gate. I love that. What a great young guy. Mm -hmm. That's cool. We've talked to a Making couple of 22-year-olds in the last couple of hours that are doing pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. So there's hope, America. <laughs> there's hope. The next generation coming on. There's some good ones in the bunch. There's a bunch of good ones in the bunch. And um, no bunch has all good ones. No <laughs> bunch has all bad ones. But this bunch has got some really good ones. That's pretty cool. And the trades, uh, well, with this uh, epic student loan debacle yeah. that we have uh, in higher education, the trades are coming back on with a gale force winds. Everybody's moving into the trades. I mean, when you can, with a high school education at 22, for the last four years, while his friends were in college making nothing, he's made $100,000 a year. <laughs> He's doing okay. He's 400 grand ahead before they got started. Mm, very interesting. 